protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com Well, while everyone is watching the mayhem that is rolling out this election cycle, Rand Paul is still working diligently on some other very important issues. So keep a lookout on that. He's still pushing to have the 28 redacted pages of the 9-11 investigation report released. He wants that to be released within the next 60 days of the National Defense Authorization Act uh, being signed into law later this year. So look out for that. He has long been the spearhead behind this pushing to get these pages out. Uh, but he is also introducing an amendment uh, to the upcoming defense bill saying that the current administration and other presidents to come are totally abusing the uh, authorization for military use of force because it was granted back in 2001 for Afghanistan and Iraq after 9-11. But now they're just yeah, we're just going to keep using this. it for whatever we feel exactly. like. Exactly. Yeah. Rolling out. And he says it, the Constitution explicitly gives the power to declare war to Congress. And the never ending series of wars is not being wound down by Obama. And we can only imagine what will happen if someone like Hillary Clinton gets in. So definitely keep an eye on what Rand Paul is up to. Yeah. And what's interesting is the Saudi government's now come out and, and is starting to place blame on the American government saying, right. well, you need to look at your own government before you come after us yeah. because we can't be, if we're going to get sued, then. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how this all plays out. We've talked about it plenty of times before. I don't know how you have three buildings fall when only two are hit by airplanes. And, yeah. And then you see yeah. the, the metal rods there that were supposedly supporting the building are, are, are cut at an angle, cut at yeah. an angle. So obviously if we find out the Saudi connection, we're going to find out why Bush flew the bin Laden family out the next day on private jets, even though. I mean, it's going to be... Go listen to Willie Rodriguez's testimony. He heard it and felt an explosion before the plane even hit. How does right. that happen? Yeah. Well, it'll know. be very interesting. So now let's move on to another vast conspiracy. It's always evident when you see all the establishment media parroting the exact same thing. So mm -hmm. obviously they got the orders from down on high that it's finally time to call out Donald Trump for his visit to As a conspiracy to theorist. Oh my goodness, he and oh. Roger Stone have been visiting sites. And so now we've got the New York Times, um, there's Media Matters, uh, Washington Post, CNN, CNN a MSNBC. Lot talking about he, how he is, Donald Trump is the conspiracy candidate and now right-wing media is getting its wish that this type of, uh, these type of topics are finally now pushed out in the mainstream. Of course, now that he's coming out, to, talking about things that the media refuses to talk about. Right. For instance, Bill Clinton's sex scandals. How about the 25 plus trips he took on the pedophiles jet? You know, never mention that. You got to mention of it in Fox News, but nothing else. You know, and, and, and those questions won't be asked to Hillary. What do you think of this? No, we're going to sit there and focus on Trump and what he's saying, who he might have dated in the past. Mm -hmm. I mean, Trump's not being accused of infidelity. Right. You know, or they accuse him of, of making a comment to a woman in a bikini. Oh, oh, who does that? Hard, terrible. <laughs> what an awful guy. He's but they, already... they really have come out. I've actually, I'm working on a video um, with Alex that I'm going to release as soon as it's done, put it out on YouTube, where he's exposing that the media is in panic mode right now because they see the writing on the wall. They see what Trump's doing. They don't like what he's talking about. They don't like who he's talking about. So the their only defense at this point is to try to poke holes in what Trump's done. Oh, he wasn't the perfect businessman. He, you know doesn't like Rosie O'Donnell. He doesn't like Mexicans. He doesn't like uh, uh, Middle Easterners. You know, just anything they could come up with. And those talking points that, that are talked about in the mainstream media have parroted down to all their little groundlings who are right. running around trolling because these Because they're Trump all owned events. by the same people. Exactly. And so they get their talking orders and they all put out the same. So you can read all the different article, articles and platforms and it all says the exact same thing. And then so, of course, Donald Trump points out <laughs> You know, why do we have all these cameras and reporters following me when if you really want to see a scandal, go look at the Clinton Foundation. Like, look at that there. And we'll get to that coming up later with this email server. I mean, my goodness, smoking gun, it is done with her. The fact that they've finally put this report out. Um, but, he, you know, he's absolutely right with the Clinton Foundation. If you want a real scandal, why doesn't the Washington Post have 20 plus reporters on that? Because that's what they're not interested in. They're, in, you know, Hillary Clinton is a mouthpiece and a hack for the establishment. So they want to place her, anoint her as the next president, and they are just losing their sh, if you know what I'm talking about, over Trump because he has just defied 
every expectation at this point, especially mine. I didn't think he would even get this far. I figured they would steal the um, the nomination from him, and there's still a chance to do that. They just uh, gave, I think, 40 of the 41 delegates from Washington to Ted Cruz, wow. even before the primary happened. <laughs> so he won the primary, but he doesn't get any of the delegates. So yeah. they're still working on that from the back room. So we may see some fireworks yet at the RNC this summer. Well, we're definitely going to be seeing them at the DNC. Um, everyone has been kind of having blaming all of the violent protesters on Trump and his supporters, but we know where it's really coming from. If you and go to any Trump absolutely rally, absolutely just hang out outside mayor. and you can see the talking point mass brainwashing going on yeah. with the public. These people don't have original thoughts in their head. They refuse to read any of, of his policies because I have asked them, would you read any of his policies? No, I don't have time for that. Oh, but you got time to to write down all the talking points and make sure you hit them all. Come here Race and argue with me. And, yeah, no, and it, well, yeah, if you have the talking points, then you're good. Right. Just don't get into any actual real oh, debates yeah. with anyone. And if they do, if you do get into a conversation that lasts more than two questions, run the other direction. Yeah, or just yell and blow your whistle, yeah. kind of like the protesters were about to talk about. Now, we're going to have some video coming up in the next segment. Uh, Jakari Jackson's on the ground there, Michael Zimmerman. They actually got rocks thrown at them, tear gassed once again. So these are violent protesters breaking through the barricade there at the Trump rally. And, and Bernie said it could be messy. <laughs> He came oh. out and said, hey, this could be messy. Yeah, because right now the they DNC. have their little minions at the going after Trump. Right. And none of them have been going after Hillary Clinton, who is Bernie Sanders' actual competition at the moment. So they right. kind of lost their chance where, you know, maybe they could have been taking out Hillary Clinton, turning some. But really, they would have just turned more people to voting for her, Probably which is what's so. happening. The more people yeah. are now voting for Trump. So last night, um, Milo Yiannopoulos, he is a really controversial writer for Breitbart. He's hilarious. He's like an excellent troll level. Masterful trigger. <laughs> he, is what I he's think like a master him. triggerer. And so he's on this tour uh, where he's going around to universities, really talking about the First Amendment and why it needs to be protected and just triggering social justice warriors left and right. It is hilarious. So last night he went to DePaul University and once again we are seeing how these schools are just backing down in the face of these violent protesters. And they're saying, oh, well, we need to protect their First Amendment right. So they're enabling the everyone gets a medal society, right. which is these, these young kids that they've grown up. There's, they've never lost anything because everybody gets a medal for everything. There's no losers. Everybody's and a winner. And we get everything done by yelling and pounding our fists. Exactly. And so the schools are just encouraging this type of action. And so last night, you can see some of the things yeah. that were done there. We'll play the video. Yeah, they blew whistles. They grabbed the microphone out of the interviewer's hand. They threatened to punch Milo in the face. Uh, they screamed, feel the burn. They basically took over the stage, and, and Milo just kept his composure and stood there. And it's really interesting the way, uh, you know, these kids think this is a normal way to act. They think this is okay. They're, this is them exercising their First Amendment right to just forcibly shut down an event where these Republican students on campus paid a lot of money. They had to do a lot of activism for months to try and raise the funds to get the speakers there. And so these were the, this auditorium is filled with people who wanted to hear him speak. And so then you have this other group. They come, they rush the stage, threatening physical violence. Look at she's in his face. That right there is threatening. And the other big issue is that uh, the school, DePaul, they went against, they violated their contract just a few days beforehand, and they said, you know what, you need to get more security for this, and you have to pay for it. And oh, so right, Breitbart right. actually paid an extra $1,000 to get some more additional security. And then when the security was there, they were told to stand down and to allow the protesters to do their thing. And Because we don't want to hurt the precious yeah, snowflakes. Yeah, we don't want to hurt the snowflakes. We don't want anything to happen. Mm -hmm. and, and meanwhile, they're threatening to punch him in the face and all of this stuff. And so now you can see that even the left establishment. This is coming out of Huff Post, right? The Huffington Post. They are even saying, wow, look at the monsters that we have created. We've been enabling these people. And this is uh, someone saying out of the Huff Post, like, someone please introduce me to a good constitutional law professor because I'm really confused about the First Amendment. Until yesterday, I never realized that forcibly shutting down a private speaking event was considered free speech. I was also surprised to learn that assaulting a police officer is now a form of protest, and it certainly never occurred to me that making violent threats toward a speaker was a constitutionally protected right. So, in fact, I was pretty confident all of these things were highly illegal, 
But yet that's exactly what radical protesters did yesterday. And the crowd, you know, had enough. And after an extended period of time, they started chanting at the security, do your job, do your job. Hey, stop. You know, we're having an event, a private event for our, our club or whatever they had uh, over there. They, you know, they invited Milo to come speak. Right. You know, our, our, I never, I, I used to go watch these people speak in college, different, different people would come in. And I never saw people act this way. You might have people protesting out front mm -hmm. or right in front of the door or handing out leaflets or something or trying to engage people, but never to this degree. And yeah. it, it's the enabling- where They're actually threatening violence. We have a um, yeah. Joseph Watson article up where now there's even more kill Trump threats. And that's uh, okay. Flooding Twitter yeah. before the Anaheim, the, the Anaheim event that's set to take place where we've got guys on the ground there as well. And they're expecting riots. I mean, we saw what is, happened last night in Albuquerque, just insane mayhem, madness. Mm -hmm. And these are people, they're just exercising their First Amendment right. And that's something that people always argue on the other side. They say, well, it doesn't, it doesn't protect violent or hateful speech. And yet that's exactly what's happening here. And they're being protected. They're threatening to punch someone in the face and making violent threats. And yet they're protected. So it only protects... It only protects the speech that they feel is is okay. If it's not okay speech, then we can't have it. It's hurtful. It scares me. And they base it all. It goes back to their feelings. It has no basis in logic. And if you watch, there's there's a video. I think it's called "Degenerate Protesters Curse at um, People Going Into the Trump Rally." This is yesterday. And as these people are walking through, they have to walk through a gauntlet of people screaming and cursing at them. When the females walk by, they're like, "You're a woman. How could you?" Uh, uh. I mean, these people are just such scum. Where do they come from? Right. And why do they think it's their place to go out and and, and try to change or, or scream at people? It's, right. it's the screaming Where at people Where are they getting constantly. this little violent fascist red guard training? And that's what's so frightening. Yeah. And if I was a parent, I would rip my kid out of these universities because they're not being well prepared to get a job when they get out of school and all of these future employers are going to be have to be dealing with this type of babyish behavior. Uh, for instance, check this out. Students are wanting to abolish midterms and any grades below a C That's right. because they said that they've been too busy with their <laughs> political activism. They've been out too busy protesting that they haven't been able to Aww. study well. And so now they're making these demands saying we demand you abolish the midterm and allow us to have a conversation with our teacher instead. I mean, what the hell? Like, this is what happens now. This is this is people can just come and make these demands and just completely restructure society and how it works. And these schools are encouraging it. The deans are like, you're right. I quit. I stepped down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're totally kowtowing to these people. And it, it really is the mentality of everybody wins all the time. We can't right. have any losers. And uh, it's a, it's a socialist mentality, really. This right. is what this is, and they've they've started this in uh, in grade school and in, in elementary school, and it just builds on up. And the kids expect it because this is how they've been treated their entire right. lives. And they, when you treat people never like been this, spanked. everyone's they a winner. It. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And well, it, and the thing totally too is disgusting. like imagine now they're fighting, they're doing this fight for fifteen, and so they're even now threatening to have these type of really uh, exacerbated protests for this as well. But one robot cost $35,000, right? Yeah, that's kind of expensive. But to pay one person $15 an hour, 40 hours a week, would cover the cost of that robot who could replace every employee at McDonald's. They're doing it so at Wendy's So they're just right gonna, now. they're like driving everything yeah. down into society. So it's all right. this you is what they want. Screwed. This is what this they is want. This is lost generation. This is what they want right here. They want, they don't really work for a living. They want to scream and rant and think that's going to get their way. And it, they, I can't wait till they get out in the real world. These oh, people man. try to go get a job with their their women's studies degrees or, or their fairness and <laughs> and everything act or whatever whatever these people are, are into. Well, and that's the thing is a lot of people are saying is that when you have people at the top who are so corrupt and you, your your leaders are so corrupt and they're not checked, you're going to start to see that trickle down into society, and that is exactly what we're seeing. We have the Democratic frontrunner for president, Hillary Clinton, who violated the security rules. This whole email, so people want to just, would the email, it's not. Well, now we've got the smoking gun. They've released this report. And according to this audit, Clinton, Clinton ignored the guidelines. She didn't seek approval for any from any of the senior information officers when she established and set up this private email server. And she was hacked several times, 2011 mm -hmm. hack attempts. 
showing that she was afraid to open her email. Uh, the, the IT people said, okay, shut down the server for a few minutes, but don't anyone send her any Goose sensitive information. Goose to read her emails for fun. For funsies. Yeah. And here is the thing that I think is just the total smoking gun. She is guilty. She knew what she was doing. There was a November 2010 email exchange between her and Huma, which, by the way, her and Huma are the only two who have refused to cooperate with the uh, with the State Department's investigation with the Inspector General. So, hello. But in November 2010, Huma sent her an email saying, hey, you know, we should talk about putting you on the state email or releasing your email address so that you're not going to spam because she was going to some of her subordinates' mm. spam email. And she said... Let's get separate address or device, but I don't want any risk of the personal being accessible. So Ooh. she didn't want her personal stuff accessed by the State Department. Boom, guilty, done deal. Well, that's what happens when you're corrupt. Absolutely. Well, stick around because we've got some excitement in Albuquerque. A lot of people ask me, what is the most important area of InfoWars that runs the whole operation that is having such a big effect against the globalist. And I've said it over and over again, it is you, the listeners and the viewers, that send us the intel, the news tips, that support the broadcast, that spread the word. You are 90% of the operation or more. You don't stand beside us, you stand at the heart of InfoWars. When I talk about the people at InfoWars, from customer service, the shipping department, being just as important as our anchors, our researchers, our investigative journalists and myself, it's absolutely true. Without this team that we've built over the last 20 plus years, we wouldn't be able to do any of what we've been doing. And that's what's so exciting because we finally built up to a point where we now have the launch pad. Introducing AutoShip from InfoWarsLife.com, a new way to save time and money when you stock up on InfoWarsStore.com products. Again, ladies and gentlemen, when products are sold out, you're unable to get them, sometimes for months, but we hold back the products for people that have already signed up for AutoShip. When you choose auto ship before checkout on your order at InfoWarsStore.com, we'll give you 10% off and give you guaranteed delivery of out of stock products that are on your auto ship list. Plus, we're giving you free shipping on all orders above $50. Listeners have been requesting this for years because it's so easy to forget to reorder the products when you need them each month. Now it's finally here. Auto ship at InfoWarsStore.com and InfoWarsLife.com. It's easy. Go to InfoWarsStore.com, select your favorite product, click on the auto ship, and choose how often you want us to send you another order. As you know, I coined the term 360 win, and with the new auto ship feature at InfoWarsLife.com, it's a sure win. You add to that free shipping on orders of $50, it is a can't lose. Visit InfoWarsStore.com and save 10% off on your next InfoWars Life order by selecting Auto Ship at checkout and get free shipping on all orders above $50. That's InfoWarsStore.com or call toll free 888 253 3139.